Hello everyone. I welcome you to yet another super interesting session. In this today's session, we are going to understand a case study on clean water, the investment of 21st century. Why I'm saying so, we'll be discussing that today. Let us go forward and understand why I'm saying that clean water is the investment of 21st century. See, this is the reality. Thousands have lived without love, but nobody can live without water. So that is the reality. If we look at the data of fresh water, total 71% of the earth surface is covered in water. But if you look at the reality of fresh water, which is uh, usable for drinking purpose, it is just 2.5%. 2.5% also 99% of the fresh water is locked in the ice and in the ground. So out of 2.5%, only 1% ideally available fresh water for consumption. So that is the reality of water. We have heard this in school. We have heard this every now and then, but most of the people are not giving much seriousness. Until recently, now because there was a lot of abundant water until recently, until 2015 in India, but a lot of economists are predicting, a lot of studies are predicting by 2025, most of the parts in India and around the world will run out of the water. That is the reality of water. So this is the global water scarcity by 2025. So this is the color, the sky blue color denotes there will be Later or no water scarcity and red denotes economic water scarcity, yellow denotes physical water scarcity. So in India, if you are able to see here, most of the water scarcity will be economic water scarcity because the pollution levels which has happened in the lakes, rivers, ponds and everywhere, it will, it, it will become economically unviable to recover water from that. So economic water scarcity. This is the level of scarcity. These are the regions, the sky blue regions are the regions where there will be little or no water scarcity. But all other regions will be having water scarcity. So this is, this is estimated by 2025 and we are already sitting in 2023. So we are going to see a lot of water scarcity going forward. So how does water scarcity compare to other global threats? In 2016, World Economic Forum, global risk of highest concern, it, it, it said that global risk of highest concern for the next 10 years, number one is water crisis. Out of climate change, food crisis, people migration, weapons of mass destruction, etc. Water scarcity is the number one scarcity, means number one threat to humanity. For billion people facing water severe water scarcity, 4 billion people will be facing water severe water scarcity. As per UNDP report says that Pakistani authorities are negligent about impending water crisis that is posing a serious threat to country stability. Experts say that South Asian countries likely to dry up by 2025. Lot of people in Pakistan are talking about other uh, things. But this is the biggest risk which Pakistan is uh, going to face by 2021 and a lot of other countries also. So 4 billion people will be facing severe water scarcity by 2025. This is the picture. Picture looks very, it doesn't look good. Over a thousand children die each day from water related diseases, water related illness. This is the picture of one of the Indian village. There are a lot of quarrels happening over water. So the next war, which might happen, it might not happen over economic things. It might happen over water. So that is, that is the state of the situation today in some of the areas. Finding water in South Africa. South Africa has already run up 
uh, uh, it has run, uh, run dry out of water. It has become one of those countries where finding water has become very difficult. This is the picture of Nigeria. So, these were, see, how, how does an uh, investment become a great investment opportunity? Only when there are problems and if there are companies solving those problems, it can be a great investment opportunity. So, water and wastewater treatment market size, global and India. Global water and wastewater treatment was valued at uh, 223 billion dollars in 2020, and it is expected to grow at a pace of 8.1 percent CAGR to reach 329 billion by 2025. This is according to the report by Market Data Forecast. In India, water and wastewater treatment was valued at uh, 1,245 billion dollar in. Uh, 2020 and it is projected to grow at a CAGR of 8.1% from uh, 2021 to 2026 due to factors such as government initiatives, industrialization and increased demand for clean water as per the report by research and markets. Indian government Jal Mission and Atal Bhujal Yojana initiatives are expected to create significant opportunities for water treatment companies in this industry. He is one person who is betting big on water. If you have gone through the movie, if you have watched this movie, The Big Short, Mr. Michael Burry is investing in water. It is his investment of the century. And you know what happens when Michael Burry is taking some big bet? Because he made a few billion dollars by investing during 2008 crisis. And most of the bet of his have gone uh, very well. So this is one of the bet which he is taking the big bet, it is on water. Wabag is one of the world's leading companies in water treatment space. It is not only India's, it is the world's leading companies in water treatment space. It is a multinational company and, and, and it is an Indian company. So it is a multinational company available at 2,400 crore market cap. Current market price is 391. 52 week, it is trading near 52 week highs. 52 week low is around 216, which it made during June 2022. Right now it is trading at 52 week high. Book value is 258 rupees. Dividend deal, it is not give, paying any dividend. Return on equity, return on capital employed is uh, around 13.3% and 8.56%. Debt to equity is 0.24. Very debt light company. Place percentage is zero. Promoter holding is 19.1%. Lot of people raise their eyebrows when we talk about the companies which are having low promoter holding. But here is a special case because it was a management buyout. And because it was a company which was owned by foreign multinationals. And later on, they had uh, they were selling this uh, unit of water and wastewater, which is largely an Indian unit. And at that point of time, Mr. Raju Mittal took it over through a management buyout. And that is the reason why it, it, it is not a company with high promoter holding because Raju Mittal owns majority of its uh, promoter holding. I think he is holding around 15% now. Let us just check what is the exact number. Raju Mittal is owning 15.61%. So it is a management buyout. So it is a professionally run company with 19.1% share holding. So cash and cash equivalents are around 294 crore. It is like virtually debt-free company. If you look at against debt to equity, so it is like it is having 294 crores of cash on balance sheet. And apart from that, they are also having the loans. If you deduct those loans for the cash available on balance sheet, it is a net debt-free company. So this is a price chart of VATEC Baba. So from the price point of view, it is trading at the similar price where I was looking at this stock in 2013-14. Let me tell you, I was a student of MBA Environment Management and uh, I had applied for internship for, for uh, environment project. I had applied one at JSW Steel, one at VATEC Wabag and several other companies, United Spirits and all. So I got approval from VATEC Wabag and JSW Steel uh, both. But uh, ultimately, I chose uh, JSW Steel. So I've been tracking this company from 2011-2012. This is this is the time when there was a craze. It got newly listed actually in 2011, 2010. During the Modi rally, 
the stock become a multi bagger so there was a lot of uh, following for this stock during those times currently once again and after this uh, after this 2016 17 onwards there were a lot of receivables for this company from uh, ap genco government uh, some of the distribution companies so it it, it made uh, the working worse for this company and it faced a crisis during this period from 2017 to 2020. 2020 was the time when Rakesh Junjunwala invested uh, close to 100 and uh, I think 100 crores in this company, uh, close to 8% of, he picked 8% of this uh, of stake in it, in this company. So I've been tracking this company during uh, since those times. Even I posted about this uh, stock at around 194 rupees during COVID times on our Telegram channel, even on YouTube, we discussed this case. Somehow it was consolidating and once again, now the stage where it is trading, it is trading at three year high. It is not even only trading at 52 week high. It is also trading at three year high. And I feel the business now is at an inflection point because it is uh, this is when uh, when when Rakesh Junjunwala invested in this a lot of things were not clear at that point of time but when we are sitting now the clarity has emerged they are having the order book of 15,000 crore plus now which is highest in the history of its operations so current market price is around uh, 391 uh, trading at three year high and uh, still even if the stock is trading at three year high the valuations are not. We'll be talking about that also. So from market cap to sales perspective also, it is not trading at high zones. At a later stage, we'll be talking this in detail. So price is trading at three-year high, but valuations are trading at maybe 10-year low or, or seven-year low, something like that. So if you look at the numbers, the it used to do a 1,200 crore revenue in 2011. Right now, they are doing the revenue of 2,900 crores. The operating profit margin, which they are doing it around uh, 8%. Why about interested in this company at this stage now? Because their profits are growing now. If you look at the quarterly numbers, you'll be able to understand. Their operating profit margins have shot up from 8% to 11% because of change in order mix. We'll be talking about, at the, uh, about it at a later stage. And uh, there, is, there is still a possibility of margin expansion. And we always talk about... Uh, for a stock to become a multi-bagger, we need uh, four secret sources. Uh, we'll be talking about that at a later stage. Is Are they available or, or not in this company? We'll be discussing that. So 2,900 crore of uh, revenue, which the company is doing. And recently, on a trailing 12-month basis, it has posted lifetime highest profits in, in, in its history of its operations. So share capital is uh, around 12 crores reserves 1594 crores so in 2011 12 or 14 it was trading at the same price it had a reserves of 836 crore today the reserves have got doubled but the stock price is trading at the same price so borrowings it is having a 383 crores of borrowings so shareholding pattern if we look at this promoter is having 19 percent stake raju mittal a man who took over this company as a management buyout. Uh, it, it, in fact, it uh, acquired the parent company because Wabak was an Indian operation. It acquired the parent company. It took a, it did a management buyout through ICICI, and uh, it, it was a successful thing. Same like Vivaidyanathan case, which he did for Future Capital, uh, and later Future Capital got converted into Capital First. Something like similar to that. So professional management, FIs are holding around 17% stake. Uh, and recently, if we look at uh, DIAs, two funds are holding, SBI Mutual Fund, SBI Long-Term Equity Fund. Means SBI Long-Term Equity Fund is the fund which is owning, uh, who, is, who has invested in this. From the public shareholding pattern, if we look at that, Rakesh Junjunwala's wife, Rekha Junjunwala, holds around 8% stake in this company. This was all about uh, the numbers, the latest forward. So Peter Lynn, this type of stocks, I already discussed about this on YouTube channel. Once again, uh, I'll be discussing this. There are various types of companies which are uh, which will be available in the market. Depending upon uh, the type of the company which is there, we'll be able to play it better. So there are sluggards. These are the companies like NTPC, NHPC or something like that. There will be stalwarts. 
which will be the companies like uh, FMCG companies, Colgate and all those comes into stalwart. Then there are fast growers. The fast grower category I already discussed. Uh, Arvin Fashion is one of those cases where fast grower category. Recently, we discussed about 3i Infotech also. Then comes cyclicals. This Wabak's category is a, is a cyclical business because it is into infrastructure and the stocks that keep on expanding and contracting, repeating the same cycle. So the this, this is an industry which keeps on in, expanding and contracting depending upon economic activity. So industry growth rate expectation for next few years is 7 to 8%. And Wabak's growth assumption based on management commentary is around 15% CAGI. In 1999, Biotech Wabak took over water business of Doyeshe Pradapkov that operated under the Wabak name and Indian operations were separated as pure play water company. In 2004-2005, management buyouts were soaring and ICICI Venture came in to purchase uh, a stake in this company. After three years, Mittal and his colleagues bought back ICICI Venture stake and acquired European operations of VATEC, becoming an Indian multinational. So it is not a foreign-owned company, it is an Indian multinational which uh, bought parent, which bought parent's operations. The company has grown to 1,500 employees across four continents and seen an annual growth rate of 9% in past 10 years, with revenue rising from 1,224 crore to around 2,834 crore recently. So if we look at the credit rating history, uh, credit rating, India ratings affirms VTEC Wabak at in IND A plus table, uh, upgrade short term debt rating at A1 plus. So it is uh, rated good by credit rating agencies. Apart from that, this is the details of uh, the state which Rakhi Junjunwala bought. So on 29 September 2020, it uh, they allotted around 75,000 equity shares at a face value of 2 rupees for price of 160 rupees share, including a premium of 158 rupees per equity share. It is around the investment was around 120 crore rupees. So it was the preferential allotment. It was when uh, the company was facing liquidity issues. That is when Rakesh Junjunwala invested the stake in this company. So I have, uh, came up with uh, some of the management con calls, uh, con call summary and con call transcript. I have brought some uh, cuttings from that so that we will be able to understand the current state of uh, the business. So this is the snapshot management talking about pad growth growing faster than the top line. So this was uh, this is the snapshot of August 2022. So what they are saying, we have delivered another quarter of profitable growth, which is our pad growing faster than the rate of our top line yeah, has been growing. So they are already guided for it because I've been tracking this company from long time from 2013 now. 2020, 2021. In the in 2021 itself, they were saying that uh, our bottom line will be rising faster than the top line because of the change in order mix which they have done. They moved from EPC orders to EP orders and they become asset light. And because of that, uh, they were saying that. And in our, our project business is a lumpy business, so we cannot be seen as a quarter on quarter company. And we got uh, when we got listed, we educated this regularly and we are more focusing on EP projects which are engineering and procurement. Earlier we used to tell you there is EPC and C is C part we are consciously trying to reduce from our order intake because C was we C part was almost like a pass on through our books. So we try we are trying to get uh, to see that we can reduce consistently year on year the C part so that we do good rather than trying to pass on some revenues for, from our books where we it did not add a lot of value so c is construction engineering procurement and construction so construction is not their expertise anyway they were uh, outsourcing it to others it it, it was uh, not reflecting the true, true business so they got rid out of that and they completely outsourced that and they are more focusing on engineering engineering and procurement which has helped them to increase the margins. So that is why they were saying that the bottom line will go faster than the top line. So, uh, and we have seen the uh, seen those uh, results in the quarterly results, means we have seen the effect of that. So if you see recently from, uh, in, from September 2022 quarter, compared to December 2022 quarter, 
the margins are gone up from 7% to 11%. So why I got interested at this juncture in Vietek Baba is because of the change in the leadership team. Because I've been hearing, uh, Baba is anyway was a great company, but uh, for 10 years, it did not uh, create any wealth for its shareholders. And um, even though uh, Raju Mittal being at helm, uh, having such expertise, the growth rate was, was not seen at a fast, faster pace. And there was a need of fresh momentum. And uh, I'm thinking that the new CEO, Mr. Pankaj Malan, uh, might be able to do that. Because for any stock to become a multi-bagger, if there is something new happening in the company, it gets an eye for an analyst. If the stock is uh, under-researched, suddenly it comes into eyes of a lot of analysts. So that might even happen with uh, Vietek Wabak. So Pankaj Malan uh, is a deputy managing director, director and group CEO. He has joined leadership team at Wabak and uh, it is a part of their ongoing succession planning exercise. So Pankaj comes with a rich experience in power and steel sector, leading diverse roles in engineering, greenfield projects, and also leading profit center. He was also a rare associated with JSW and Vedanta as a part of their steel business and was a long timer in Tata Group. He will be taking over the group CEO responsibilities for me. This is what uh, Raju Mittal was saying in one of the con calls. So management talking about the nature of EP business. Once again, I'll be explaining that EP orders always help us to reduce the concentration risk, whereby exercising better control over execution as compared to EPC projects. EP projects orders are deliver better margin profile since we since the pass through construction portion of the revenue is reduced. And this trend of ma better margin is already reflecting in our performance. So why I got interested is this number. This is a similar situation which we saw in uh, Titagar wagons. Because suddenly when uh, Titagar wagons received lifetime highest order book, the stock started surging. Because I, we made a video on Titagar wagons around 176 rupees. Uh, right now, uh, it is trading well over 120% plus. The reason for why I was looking at Titagar wagons, because Titagar wagons was also one of the hated stocks in stock market. It did not create any wealth for its shareholders for 10 years. This is what I discussed even in Titagar case. But even Titagar wagons, which was uh, struggling for 10 years, but something got changed in Titagar wagons and uh, the order book surged like anything. And that is what has helped the stock of Titagar to surge. Similar situation I am seeing in uh, Vietek Babag. Vietek Babag, this is the snapshot of one of the transcript. And uh, this is the latest transcript. So management is saying they are having an order book of 15,000 crores. So this is what Heman Suni asked. And sir, can we expect to close this year? It's FY 2023 at 15,000 crore order book. They had an order book of 10,000 crore. Uh, and we have a preferential bidder for 5,000 crore of order. So they were expecting the total order book to go to 15,000 crore by the end of FY 2023. This is what Raju Mittal said that yes, they are already having that. They are uh, having a preferential bidder for that 5,000 crore, but yet not, it was not ex executed means yet not, uh, they got that complete order, but uh, they are wishing, they were wishing for it. And on the last day, just before two days of March end, they announced this. We take Baba won its largest order of 4,400 crore in a JV. So put together and we posted that on our Telegram channel on 31st March. So just before the year ended, they posted about this and the total order book, they took it uh, from 10,000 crore to around 15,000 crore. So with this 5,000 crore order book, they will be expecting uh, in the last uh, week of March and they already received that. So this is what I posted. So already they have a order book of 15,000 crore. Now they are celebrating 15,000 crore order book for a company which is trading at 2,004 or 2,500 crore market cap. 15,000 crore order book is huge. So this is one of the question which was asked by Mr. Mohit Kumar in Concall. My second question is about order opportunity. How does the domestic order opportunity is looking like at this point of time? When do you say that your large orders are preferential bidder? 
can you let us know the quantum of this order so this they said three extremely large orders at least about 5000 crores so which they already received actually which they will be able to close in the next 6 to 7 weeks this is what they were saying before the march end and they already received that order book so and when asked out of the 15000 crore order book how much time they will take to execute that so what is the executable period this is what management said raju mittal said that uh, it is about 3 years but you can take it about uh, 3.5 years so in 3.5 years they will be able to execute this 15000 crore order book so looking at that company has a good position to increase its sales or 15% plus over the next few year this is what indirectly management is giving sales guidance so emen suni is once again they asked your diluted h2 revenues will be better than hv now currently we are seeing that q2 3 revenue is down compared to q2 can you throw some light on that so he said this project business is a lumpy business if we have got a few projects which we have planned in q3 which we have got that some of the projects for decision making it gets postponed by month or two months it happens but generally what you are saying is always a trend h2 h2 will be always better than h1 so the march end result are yet to come and uh, going by the management commentary we can expect uh, a good march end uh, for this company so we have done a bit in h1 so we definitely going forward some of the projects will get converted we'll show some revenues at least in the engineering front in the next 2 to 3 months we'll see good q4 in a good result this this is what management has already said so once again this is this is what raju mattal is saying about the opportunity going forward today the pollution control boards are tightening their norms you cannot just discharge effluent or waste water which is not meeting the discharge standard so there is more and more demand going forward which is towards zero liquid discharge i have discussed because i was a student of mba environment management and most of my batchmates are in environment field only so i happened to visit pune to my friend uh, mr tana ji who is into this business water and waste water i understood from him that how big is the opportunity for water and waste water going forward and what has changed because i have worked in jsw steel in, during 2012 2013 time uh, during those time we used to see mpcb cpcb guidelines and all that but i just asked him what is the difference now compared to 2013 10 years down the line what is the difference he said the rules have become so stringent and this is what even raju mittal is, uh, is saying so zero liquid discharge is going to be the way going forward this is what raju mittal says one one more thing which uh, he had said we have clearly mentioned that what we want to remain as technological player and focusing what we are good at eb so they have already given guidance on being asset light more asset light going forward by being in eb and not in apc that the directional change which we have done 6 to 7 quarter back you can see the results are clearly visible today and bottom line is substantially growing which was planned so debt level have came down our cash flows have gone up you have see you can see the interest cost and bank charges have come down management is saying about future possibilities for water and waste water business so budget has kept focus on water investment on with higher allocation of 70000 crores to the jal jeevan mission so allocation for green hydrogen mission for around 20000 crore which is also encouraging as this will indeed indirectly increase the business landscape for water sector uh, miratek baba is also already working in uh, green hydrogen uh, business so global gwi ranking from fourth place to third place for uh, for ensuring water uh, ensuring safe and clean drinking water it has recognized among top 10 global desalination players their desalination project which they have done in chennai is fascinating if you just uh, look at the size that's why vietek baba is called as uh, is is counted among top 10 global desalination players so they are into desalination if you look at the trend of operating profit margin this was 2022 if we look at this 2023 mark if we just add december 2022 also operating profit margins have sort of so one of the secret sauce of a multi bagger margin expansion it is already having that second secret sauce of a multi bagger which i said about sales growth they are also already having that because they are saying about 15000 crore 
executable order over the next three years. If you just calculate that the revenue growth will be anywhere around 15% plus, which is double the industry growth because industry growth right now is 8%. And VATEC Babag is covered by uh, Geojit Financial Services, a broker. They came up with a research report with a target of 383. We, I, I don't give much more importance to the target here, but look at the commentary which they are talking about. This research report is available on Trendilin. You can go through that. Much more uh, insightful things they have given in this research report. Now, this is what I shared. So why it is uh, important for you as a YouTube subscriber of Strategic Alpha to know what we are posting, where we are posting. So we are uh, available on multiple social media handles like Telegram, Twitter, and Instagram. For the learning purpose, most important is Telegram and Twitter. So I posted on uh, Telegram on 18th uh, November 2020. It was trading at around 194 rupees as a potential value bagger. I posted about this way back during COVID only. So I said, this business is in my circle of competence. I was a student of MBA environment management. I'd applied for internship in this company in 2011, but finally chose JSW Steel. It is a global company available at just 1,200 crore market cap, a story led by Raju Mittal, management buyout of parent company. I believe worst, to near to, worst is near to over. We are getting a leader in this leader company with strong management at deep value. Waba can be a 10 bagger opportunity in long run, provided we get answers to some of the questions here in Waba. Waba has high receivables from government. Will the receivable reduce going forward? Waba was facing cash crunch in past. Is the situation eased out now? And after this, I got this both these answers because the receivables got reduced from AP Genko and all uh, the improved. And after that, the it was facing cash crunch and later on. Uh, Rakit Junjunwala invested 100 crores and that eased out uh, the cash crunch in this company because there was a preferential allotment of 120 crore worth of shares. So this is, I posted this even before Rakit Junjunwala bought it. Once again in June 2021, I posted about it. It was uh, trading at around 250 odd then. Wabag is a global player in water and waste, water waste in a sunrise industry. I've been tracking its business in 2011 since my MBA days. Raju Mittal is a champ. They bought the parent company through reverse merger. So this is what I posted in March 2023. Once again, met my friend a few uh, days back. He's into water and wastewater business. The way he explained the potential of Wabag and entire water and water, wastewater business and how government is focusing and being strict on environmental norms compared to pre-2011 times. This is not 2019. Pre-2011 times, I was spellbound because we both... We're at a project at JSW still. So we both understand each other. We both understand the landscape of the business. So it was easier for me to understand from him about the potential of water and wastewater business. So this is what I posted on Twitter on March 6th, 2023. Then I posted about the new development on 23rd March, 2023 on Twitter handle. Pankaj Malhan is the new CEO and MD for Vietek Babak. Pankaj is known for turnarounds. Will he be able to take Wabak to new eyes? We are here enough of this water play from long time. Pankaj can be a source of inflection point. This is what I posted. Even I posted his LinkedIn profile. Then I posted once again in March, VATEC Wabak. Once I went through the on-call transcript, I wrote about this. More focus on operations and maintenance going forward uh, projects along with emphasis on EP diverging from EPC, leading to EBITDA margin expanding from 7.2% to 11.2%. Change in the strategy, the EBITDA margin would be sustainable as per the management commentary. Order book seems 10,000 crore. It was available, uh, the, the order book was 10,000 crore. Right now it is 15,000 crore. Change in top management joined Vietek Wabag. This could, this could be an inflection point. This is what I said. The valuation offers comfort stock trades at Trailing 12 month P of 10.3x when the market was trading at 20 times earnings. This company, which had 10,000 crore order book, was trading at a valuation of just 10.3 times. Value to her, but to make money in this stock, the big question is: will the stock come in favor in, in favor of institution? Only time will tell. This is what I shared. On March 31st, once again, I updated about this. The largest ever order of 4,400 crore in a JV for desalination plant in Gen Chennai. Fundy risks are not there. It is funded by Japan International Corporation Agency. 
with this 5000 crore order booking that they were expecting the last quarters have been achieved it improves growth visibility usually for the next 2 years another order is still expected this is still expected actually i am just waiting for the uh, they will be announcing that soon also stock remains cheap around 10x earnings significant re-rating lies ahead is what i posted on 31st march once again on april 17 i posted about this give special attention to the stock that are trading at 52 week highs because uh, when the markets are not baba recently on 5000 crore 15000 crore total order book uh, bottom line rising faster than top line this is what i posted and and stock was trading at 52 week high when the markets were not so when we look at the valuations it is important for you to follow me on twitter and telegram so that you'll get updates uh, timely updates about the stocks which i am tracking now looking at the valuations let us look at the valuations wabag market cap to sales ratio chart if you look at this is when i was tracking this company 2011 so from market cap to sales ratio it is trading at the same valuations which it was trading in 2011 so market cap to sales is 0.8 currently वाबा पी रेशियो चार्ट इफ यू लुक इट फ्रॉम पी रेशियो ऑल्सो पी तो देखना नहीं चाहिए ऑलवेज टॉक अबाउट दैट बट स्टिल क्योंकि फॉरवर्ड पी देखना चाहिए कभी भी ट्रेलिंग ट्वेल्व मंथ का पी नहीं देखना चाहिए बट इवन इफ यू लुक इट फ्रॉम द पी फ्रंट पी भी दस साल के एवरेज के नीचे ट्रेड कर रहा है इट इज ट्रेडिंग बिलो टेन ईयर एवरेज पी नाउ प्राइस टू बुक वैल्यू ऑफरिंग इनफ मार्जिन ऑफ सेफ्टी इवन फ्रॉम द प्राइस टू बुक वैल्यू रेशियो If you look at uh, Viatek Vabag, Viatek Vabag is trading below long term average. Long term average is around one point nine. It is trading at around one point four today. So sales has grown, the book value has grown, stock has is trading at same levels. But the valuations we are getting enough margin of safety in Viatek Vabag today. Margin of safety is very much important, and I have talked about the margin of safety in one of the videos. you can go through that videos apart from that there is a special blog which i have written on margin of safety why it is important for an investor you can go through that the link of the blog will be given in the description below and if you are a student of market you must go through all those videos which i am talking in these videos when i am uh, explaining you these case studies because it is very much important to understand and no one should be considering these uh, whatever we will be uh, talking about the case studies as a tips because tips milta hai restaurant mein and this is we are not here to provide any tips we believe that uh, the more you learn the more you earn and uh, you should be doing your own homework before taking investment decisions so my take about viatek babak with focus more more focus on operations and maintenance going project going forward along with emphasis on enp project diverging away from epc margins expanding from 7.2% to 11.5% order book have being uh, for 15000 crore or forex of annual revenue would ensure the top line would be growing at a healthy rate coupled with increasing margins as per the management commentary both bottom line and top line will be growing and bottom line will be growing at a faster pace than the top line change in top management is a bet here would enable better execution of the project going in the kyunki koi bhi banda naya aata hai na usko usko prove karna hota hai agle 3 4 saal mein so that brings energy to the company so this is what uh, a good change which has happened uh, with viatek wabak uh, with the change in strategy which may expedite growth trajectory for the company over the, uh, along with the expansion in the profitability valuations offers comfort the stock trades at uh, 10 times earnings it is a global water and wastewater business treatment business available at a valuation of less than 0.4 billion dollar valuation wabak is working in a sunrise sector where business it's itself is at an inflection point with a order book of 15000 crore wabak is well set to post a revenue of 3500 crore in fy24 4100 crore in fy25 and 5000 crore of revenue in fy2026 and a subsequent pad of 180 crore 210 crore and 250 crore going forward coupled with low valuations and inflection point in the business wabag is well placed to become a potential multi bagger candidate so this was all about viatek wabag the opportunity of water and waste water business and uh, subsequent opportunity in viatek wabag so let me put a disclaimer here i'm not a sebi registered investment advisor please, please do not consider this as an investment advice do your own homework this is purely for educational purpose 
So if you like this content, don't uh, forget to like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are available on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, the more uh, Twitter handle and the most important thing is the blog. Because if you are a learner and if you want to create fortunes from stock market, I always believe the more you learn, the more you earn. And most of the learning blogs and videos are given in the YouTube and on, on the blog. The link of the blog is given in the description below. You can go through that. It is strategicalpa.in slash blog. You can go through that and stay connected on our Telegram channel and uh, Twitter handle as well. So this was all about VA Tech Walkback. Hope you have enjoyed this. If you have enjoyed this, don't uh, forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you for attending this session. So thank you everyone. This is the time to end this session. Uh, hope there are no more questions. I'm ending this session now. Oh,